everybody, and welcome to another P Roundtable. I'm Cyphus. I'm sitting here with Reginald Flubbington with two Bs, the third. Hey, man. Or something. Nice. I don't know. You know, I tried. Uh, and uh, we have a very special guest in the studio today, folks. He's a master of all things nut-related, peanut salesman, or Cinity. Hello, yeah. Uh, big fan. Uh... Uh, I got into the peanut sale industry after being apprenticed by uh, the, I was going to say the late, great Jimmy Carter, but he's still alive. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really into it. You know, there's that giant peanut statue. They actually are going to be renaming that after me uh, once I die, yeah. which, you know, it's going to take a while. But And yeah, humorously enough, you have a peanut allergy. So, you know, it all, it, it, life's funny that way, you know? I don't, I don't have a peanut allergy, but uh, Five Guys, I do a lot of work with Five Guys because they're dope. Um, not Five Guys like the Five Individuals, joint. Five Guys, the the delicious, majestic burger joint that is by far my favorite burger. And everybody's going to get a, everybody's gonna get in a little tizzy about that because you got all your In-N-Out people, you got your mm. Shake Shack I people. say fuck yeah. In-N-Out. That's what I say. I'm, I, I'm with you. I'd rather have a Five Guys burger than an In-N-Out burger. I yeah. like it. I like In and Out. I think In and Out's really good. I just think Five Guys is better. Um, and I feel like this is probably the most hate comments I'll ever get uh, from a podcast. But Five Guys is just so good. That's just so good. Unless you have a peanut allergy or a sesame allergy, in which case you're screwed and you can't have the delicious Five Guys. No, we don't want but, you there anyway. That, that's interesting because my brother has a peanut allergy and he's eaten at Five Guys before and been fine. Well, their fries. Did, did they change something recently? Well, they, I mean, A, they have the free peanuts everywhere, um, and the yeah. B, they fry their fries in peanut oil. That's, like, why their fries are good, um, or uh, better. He probably just doesn't get the fries then. Gotcha. Yeah, and I know I have a friend with a sesame, a sesame allergy, and they only use sesame seed buns, and I think they use some kind of, like, sesame oil in something, um, but yeah, gotcha. they're, Five Guys is dope. I'm all about it. I like customization in my meals, especially yeah. with burgers. Uh, God bless. What's that? Uh, what's the steakhouse joint where they just like leave the peanut shells all over the floor? Uh, uh, five Guys, Texas, Texas Roadhouse. Yeah, Texas Roadhouse. I was gonna say, I th- those are the two places I can imagine would be uh, really terrifying. Mind if field. you if you had if you had a li- like a, a you know because they're all ranges of or all uh, uh, sort of ranges of responses to with you know an allergic reaction. But uh, mm-hmm. if you had a pretty serious one, those two places, yeah, you would want to know uh, if you were within 500 feet of any one of those places at any given time, if you had a serious that, That's yeah. weird. That's weird that both of you guys say that that's, that's in the, those places around you. Because, like, I, I have both of those restaurants around me, and neither one do that anymore. They have them, like, in, like, little, like, buckets on the table, but, like, they don't do, like, the whole around on the floor anymore. That was, like, a 90s thing for me. Um, I haven't been to a Five Guys recently because it's like a real hassle to drive to, even though I have one like 20 minutes away. But last t- I went there, they did that where like they just had like barrels basically of peanuts like in the middle. So like between the counter and between the um, between like tables, there was just like a like I don't even remember how long, like a six foot long like section of boxes that were just filled with peanuts and you would just take like one of those little boats and scoop peanuts and then like you weren't supposed to throw the peanut shells on the ground like that's not like encouraged but it's a thing that everybody does anyway right um uh-huh, right and they just they just get everywhere um but i don't know yeah god bless five guys well we aren't really going to talk about peanuts all day folks uh instead we're going to talk about dota 2 the boston major in the upcoming patch, uh, but first, uh, since uh, I, I I'm still not playing Dota, uh, I I don't know if both of you heard Roland give me an immense amount of shit on the Monday show. He's very ashamed. It's uh, yeah. it's become a, a real life thing, <laughs> by the way. Like it's a it's a you, you, people hear it on the recording, and I think they might walk away with uh, oh that's funny that Roland giving Sif a shit for not playing Dota two. That's real life for me. And it's it might actually be toned down on the show, I will say. Yeah, yeah. I uh, honestly I expected more when on the show. Like the title of the show was like you know, oh, Roland complains about type is not doing it, and then, like he didn't complain about it until like fifty minutes in, and I was like, oh boy, I guess like this is just a little thing. But yeah, no, I um, it's definitely a testament to like 
it, it's an interesting dynamic where Roland's playing more Dota than ever, and or not like right now, but pre-child, um, like he was absolutely pounding like every game he possibly could in, and like maximizing XP and all that. And you're not playing at all. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, everybody does it differently, and especially there's no shame in not playing Dota when like the patch is a hundred and whatever, 180, 190 days old. You got a new patch coming, so you know like any practice you get in like this week or last week is pretty much pointless because like things are gonna change. And it's just kinda like, I don't know, other games are fun, it turns out. I don't play Elite Dangerous, but like I've been playing a lot of Tomb Raider, for instance, because I just want to hang out and like play a fun game. I also have been playing unranked and like just doing like learning new heroes and stuff like that so i i, I feel you i've gone on hiatuses before uh, how about you flub you done any hiatuses before well uh kind of this week weekend like uh, i mean i've been playing with people a lot more so i've been like playing with the community and it's been a lot of fun to um just like reach out and play with everyone again because generally uh it's just like ham time and then like work on solo that's like the only thing i ever do um, but I haven't really worked on my solo in a while, and I, I did a little bit this weekend, but uh, it kind of went in a started to go in a negative because I think I'm just bored and was doing silly stuff after a while. Um, but I also went into Overwatch, and because like I, I was just bored of the patch, and I enjoy that game. That's like my, my, my go to game outside of Dota, um, and I just like gained 500 even more in that because yeah, it was just something to do and it was it was a it was a hell of a lot of fun you know you just pick it up and um get in just like with Dota, you know you, you can group up with people or not and in that game you you can group up with people and still raise your mmr so uh it's it feels good to group up with people whereas with dota like i'm purposely not trying to because i want to work on my solo so i have like something that's worthy of my time, I guess is the best way to to say. Yeah, that's uh, an interesting way to look at it. I, 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 I'll be honest. It's more been, it's more been about just kind of burning out. I guess a little bit on Dota. I, I, I went. I mean, I, I, I was playing every day. I mean, for a, a, a long while. I mean, I, I don't want to uh, undersell it. And in fact. I suspect that there are people that listen to this podcast that are a bit more casual with their Dota play um, that, you know, don't even play every day. <laughs> and I I mean, I it's rare. It's rare that I go a, a day without playing Dota. Um, I, I would say maybe the only days that I never get to play Dota are like uh, occasionally I would miss a Sunday or a Monday just because of, you know, work and recording. Um, but I, other than that, I, I probably got at least a game in every day. Um, so I, 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 I you know, yeah, I, I play, I, I feel like I play a lot of Dota. I guess here's the crazy things. I feel like I play a lot of Dota and I play half as much as Roland does. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and so whenever, uh, if I have any amount of drop off, which to me feels normal because I, 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 I guess I, I I go through these phases where and Ursi, I think you, you, you I listened to the Tuesday show and you were talking about um uh you, you got a little bit of shit because people said that you're, you you kind of started off by saying you you don't feel competitive um which obviously you are but I I feel I felt in that moment like I knew perfectly where you were coming from because I if I'm playing a game I want to be good at it I want to learn and improve while I'm playing it. Um, you know, I, 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 I don't want to halt or like, or just in continue playing Dota 2 at the exact same level that I'm playing it at now. Um, but on the flip side, it's still, I, I still view it as, I still view it as a video game. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a, it's a game. I am, I am, uh, using that as a pastime and obviously I, you know, I've based a, a large part of my extracurricular activity around Dota 2, uh, you know, spoiler mm-hmm. alert. Um, but I, uh, I'm going to play other games. I, I, I've been a gamer all, all my life, you know, uh, even though Dota has taken up a huge chunk of it, there are other games that I want to explore. There are other, you know, facets of that industry that I want to explore. And, uh, because we wind up being limited on this uh, and on time, if we want to have a day job like I do or go and Ursi does, 
uh, Flip, I don't know if you what your day job situation is, but uh, I know you go to school. I know, Ursa, you're still going to school. I, I did the work school thing and still managed to play a lot of Dota. Uh, but if you're going to have a lot of your time eaten up doing those those things, at some point, Dota time's got to give if you're going to explore something else. And I just I I decided I wanted to explore uh, a new type of game, um, but, and you know, Elite Dangerous was uh, hitting that like sci-fi nerd in me, which is a huge part of uh, who who I am just as a person. Like growing up, like space, being a space miner, yeah, I I'd, I'd fucking do that job. I know that it looks like work. I know that elements of that game look like a grind, uh, but it's not a grind whenever it's it's something that you wish you could do. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I haven't recently, like I haven't, I don't think I've ever spent more than like a week not playing Dota in like the past two years. But before that, like I would take like breaks that were like a, a month at a time sometimes. Um, and even like, if you consider like that, I played Dota one, like I took a year long or over, over one year long breaks from like Dota one to Dota two. So I haven't recently taken a break, but it really like, I mean, especially when you talk about Dota on a podcast for like hours and hours a week, there is burnout. And I like obviously I still play a ton of like Flip was saying, like we play since we have like a team and we have like scheduled practices that forces us to play um, effectively. And that's like while I'm still playing Dota right now, I feel the fatigue and like I just play less like I just nowadays I don't really play solo like I used to play. Uh, especially when I was like grinding solo ranked, like I would at least play a couple games a day in unranked or ranked, like depending on how I'm feeling. And that definitely, I'm not doing that anymore. Now, like I get on for Hakuna Marana team practice, or if I know a stack is going on, I'll come and play in the stack and practice something. Um, so I, I definitely feel you. And obviously, I think um, when we have stuff like the major to watch, that's kind of another outlet for Dota or um, podcasts like. If you want to just hang out and like think about Dota, but not actually play the game, like you can play, you know, Elite Dangerous, or you can play whatever, and listen to a Dota podcast, or listen to the Major Stream, or listen to whatever. So, I mean, Dota is such a, a stressful activity that I think naturally everybody is going to have fatigue and like take like a few days off here or there, or a week off, or a month off. And I think that's healthy too. Like, I know. Whenever I've like seen serious growth in my like ability as a player, it's generally either when I have um, taken time off to like like play the game casually and just like play a lot of unranked, or to just take a break completely, disengage, and then reengage, and then it lets you reassess uh, how you play and reassess you know your patterns and break bad habits, etc. So I don't. I don't think the role and method of just playing a ton of games is right for everybody. Like, obviously, yeah. it works for some people. Like, Proud is similar, where, like, he'll just play, like, a, like not a hundred games, but he'll play, like, a dozen games in a day sometimes. And, like, that's just what he does. And, like, you know, it works for him, obviously, and it works for Roland. But I'm not that kind of player, right? We've had this conversation many times on the show, but, like, I'd rather play two good games where I'm focused than play a dozen games where maybe I'm, like, half focused for some, but then I have fatigue, et cetera, like... Uh, yeah, so I, I don't blame you, Cyphers, that's for sure. Yeah, I, yeah, me neither, man. I, uh, sorry, did no, no, I was to... good, I was coming right to you. <laughs> okay, cool. So, um, in general, in my Dota career, uh, I would always take time off, like what, what it, it always ended at, at patches, um, at the end of patches, because, uh, one, you know, you, you just don't feel like you're getting as much from it by, by playing and it's kind of like it's something to grow on because you want to have a situation of like um you want to have a situation where you're like you you're done with this game but you don't want to like say that you're done done um and you want to have the break come before um it actually changes over because if you were to to break like when it actually does change over one you're like missing out on the experience of a new game and two like it's going to hurt you in the long run. Um, if you were to break, uh, not now, but in like a, a week or two weeks, um, I feel like you wouldn't be able to catch up with the rest of the rest of the uh, Dota society. Um, and then you're like having to play catch up when generally people have some idea of what the game is. Um, 
and that's and that's bad. You never want to be in that situation. Uh, I feel like all of us have played shooters before, and I don't know about you guys, but I always felt like if I bought a shooter like two months after or um, like a month after the original release date, mm -hmm. uh, it kind of dropped off, especially like for like Call, Call of Duty and Battlefield and things like that. If I didn't get like in Hell, there, Halo. yeah, Halo. Or, like, for me, um, Gears was a big thing. Like, uh, if you didn't get in on Gears, like, when it came out, then you would be so far behind because there were certain strategies that were developed, like, on the first week of playing. That's like, okay, you run here, and you run... Uh, in Gears especially, it was like, you run three-man here, um, in this map, uh, two-man to, ca like, cover the, like, bazooka area, pretty much, and make sure that they don't get that... Uh, while you're like go over a sniper and then guarantee that you can get the bazooka by Garak grabbing sniper or something like that, you know? Um and those movement patterns that you develop with the with the Did we lose Flub? Did Flub die? I think we did. Rest in <clears throat> peace, Flub. He will be missed. Oh wait. I you guys missed me? Yeah. Well, I, no, we you just cut out for like 15 seconds. Damn. Ah, okay. So basically there's like, what I was trying to say is that there's a group of people that when you go into a match um, of Gears of War, uh, there's there's covering spots that you have to have and there's certain movements that you have to have. Um, and it's the same thing with Dota. Uh, there's certain movements, whether you go into a situation where you're where it's a very he gank heavy game um especially like when you're supporting there's like gank heavy metas there's uh, stacking heavy metas there's um metas that really support the just staying in the the res your respected lanes and trying to help out the the farmer and when you're out of that situation if you're out of that rotation it's going to take you that much longer whenever people are already used to it and they're going to like blame you and you're just not going to be in the environment to learn to be able to do what's right uh, in the situation. So I kind of like, I, I kinda, almost respect that more of you like taking away the, the, the time now because, you know, it, it will be a new game and you'll experience something new and you won't be, you won't put yourself in a worse scenario because you're not going to be burned out. Now, I don't think Roland will ever be burned out, so I'm not <laughs> saying that he's doing the wrong thing. But for someone who thinks, I, I think I think pretty similarly, similarly to you, um, and I would say that like I need that break sometimes. Sometimes you got to like feed that so that your um, that your emotions, that your uh, general input into a game, your general excitement always has a peaked moment because if you're bored with a game that that kills that kills your MMR that kills like everything about the game. Well, and I don't want to make it sound like uh, I have consciously chosen this time to like take a step back and and that I timed it with the patch or anything. Uh not by any means. Uh I mean if you want to blame anything, blame the Steam sale. Um <laughs> you know. I mean it it's it, it, it was definitely it it, I, I guess I, I, what I what I was hoping to clarify, and when what I I don't feel like I'm capable of convincing Roland of in any capacity is uh, that I can take a, a week or two off from Dota and still absolutely love it, and know that I'm going to come back to it. Um, just because I mean, this game has this this if this game has proven anything, it's that it has a lifespan, that it has longevity. Um, so I, you know, I, I know that I'll come back to it and I, I've taken a week off before and come back to it, uh, while doing this podcast, since that's where the majority of my Dota time has occurred is while doing this podcast. Um, but, uh, I mean, it was, it was more, it, it really genuinely was more just wanting to, uh, take the time to explore another game and, or, or even just see if, uh, I, I could get into a position with another, with another game where I could have another game that I play <laughs> with Dota. Um, and, and have, you know, a little bit more balance, uh, with, uh, with my, my, my gaming time, uh, which is, which is super precious to me and is, it, it's, it's few and far between. It's, it's super limited for me in a lot of ways. Um, you know, the vast majority of my gaming, 
uh, occurs on the weekends. It occurs in on the evenings when we when I don't physically have to be responsible for a recording or near the studio or on a recording. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I, 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 it was, it was time to, to explore something different and, uh, yeah, I, I took the opportunity, but I guess to, I, I was looking up when the last time Roland <laughs> missed a, uh, missed a game or missed a day of Dota. And the last time that Roland went a day and mind you that he has had a child within the last week. The last day, the last 24-hour period he went without playing a game was October 3rd. The last time he missed more than a single day in a row were the two days that we had to travel up to Seattle for TI in August. Wow. So, I mean, he gets a lot of fucking Dota in. Yeah, that's some serious dedication. I can't, like, I can't dog the guy for that. But, like, at the same time, I, I feel like that's, like... Man, that I, that would burn me out so fast. Like yeah. the, I would need something new, some type of other stimulation, man. Like, um, for me, that's just and like I love Dota, and I guess what I was trying to say, Cyphus, is like, I don't, I don't get the idea that Dota players want to shame people for like not playing and not like keeping up their the the craft. I guess is to say. I don't want to get like super technical here. I feel like I'm sounding like a douche, but um, the the idea is that you're you're it's okay to go out and like do other things, and it has applications. Uh, whether you're like playing a different game, it can help you with Dota if you're like super serious about like trying to go pro or doing something like this. You know, like doing a show that you feel responsible that you, you're keeping up um, an idea about. What what's professional about the game? What's what you do? What you have? Uh, I, I guess d- my 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 point is to say like, don't let it bother you that much, man. Uh, I know you're gonna come back soon. <laughs> well, it's I, all good. I, I think that's more his point is just uh, you know, hey, if you're gonna be doing a Dota show, uh, you you gotta be playing Dota, and I and I totally get that, and, and he's absolutely right. Um, yeah, I, you know, and he's he's your best friend. So like, yeah. if it, if my best friend like came up to me, he he totally give me shit for like, uh, because that's what they're there for, man. Like, best friends are supposed to give you shit. So yeah, for sure. Um, I I, I suspect though that like a part of what goes into him not burning out and and Ursi, maybe you you can kind of speak to this because I, I mean you've talked about you know playing variety in your hero pool. Um, you know, I I think it's that he plays every hero. You know what I mean? I think he. I, I think it's because you know you can even look at just in the last three months, Roland has played fifty-five different heroes, and that's just looking at a Smurf. That's not looking at well, uh, or Smurf Part Two. That's not looking at his main Smurf, the one that he's switched over to. Um, I, you know, so I, I I half suspect that some of that may go into it, or at least for him from an attention perspective or a a, a burnout perspective. I don't. Know, do you? I mean, do you ever find yourself swapping heroes to uh, like liven things up? Um, not not intentionally. Um, I I really just like. I don't know. Like I, I play Dota to win and have a good time, and I have a good time by winning. So if it means I'm gonna only play Marana mid every game uh, to win, I'm gonna only play Marana mid every game to win. But or like when I was supporting, like I played a variety of supports, but it was not necessarily because I required the variety to hold my attention. It was just like, well, different supports are good in different situations. Um, so I would say like I do play a variety, and that does add an extra level of like excitement to the game but it also adds an extra level of like stress and like oh i haven't played wyvern in an entire patch because she got nerfed oh well i'm just gonna jump back into her and then it's like not only am i playing dota now i'm relearning a hero that i used to be good like there's all these extra dynamics and uh, i mean i just think it's you know not to completely dull down this entire conversation but at a very basic level it's like different strokes for different folks like yeah. some people like to play a ton of Dota, but other people it's like the quality versus quantity thing. Like some people would rather play a dozen games than play six games that they're paying really close attention to. And it's just, you know, different people learn different ways. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh I have been watching Dota. Uh I, the Boston Major, as everybody knows, is kicking off. And if you are going to be at the Boston Major, uh keep an eye out for Sinity, because he's gonna be there with Proud. 
right? Yeah, I, I will be there all the days. Proud and friend of the show Skrunk are going to be there Thursday, Friday, or Friday, Saturday. And Grouty's going to be there every day of the week, and we'll be around. It's a smaller event, so I'm sure you'll run into us. I know we'll be tweeting about, or at least talking about in Discord, or what have you, a potential meetup we're doing, um, I believe Thursday night. It's going to be a very casual thing. We're not doing anything big this time, since it is a smaller event. Um, but it'll be a good time. I'll be around, and uh, I would say I'd be wearing my shirt with like my name on the back, so I'd be easy to find, but it's going to be cold. So uh, I'll have the shirt with me, but it'll probably be covered by like a hoodie or something. Um, so but do we I'm, uh, do we know yeah. what the schedule's going to look like? We do. Um, I don't know it off the top of my head. Yeah, I believe games I start at like at like ten o'clock every day, and they go until like nine or something. I don't know. I just had my press kit, and it had a list. Let me find it. Um, okay, schedule is okay. So December seventh. There is a match starting at 10 a.m., 1.30 p.m. This is all EST times. Uh, 1.30 p.m., 5 p.m., 8.30 p.m., and then next day, same schedule, next day, same schedule. And then the finals is starts at 10, then the next match is 1, 1.30. And then the last, uh, the grand final start at 6, 6 p.m. Eastern on the December 4th, or December 10th. Cool. And, you know, that's susceptible to change or, of course, delays, because that's what, what would a Dota event be without delays? That, yeah, that's the general gist of things. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I I don't think uh, of the three major events I've attended, uh, not one of them ran anywhere near perfectly on time. Yeah, well, I mean, it's just it's just due to like you know the nature of Dota, like a game can go 15 minutes or it can go 150 minutes. Yeah, well, and like, uh, this one is all when it, right out of the group stage. It's all into best of threes. I mean, it's yes, a, it's all a, best of threes, best of five grand finals. Yeah, a best of, uh, in a, like a re, it, this is a, a straight up traditional bracket, not that like you know bottom eight team or the yeah the bottom eight teams normally compete in single elimination before we start the losers bracket. Like none of that. Mm -hmm. It's just straight through where you, how you did in the, how you did in the group stage determines how you got to select your opponent. And here, here's hoping <laughs> good luck. Yeah. I mean, it'll be exciting and all the games matter because of that. That was a lot of people's complaint with the group stage was like games just felt pointless. Um, and like, it's hard when they do these, like when they do these GSL, I think it's called GSL style, but GSL style um, group stages, like, the viewer, and unless you're super involved, games just don't feel meaningful because of the nature of like how the format works. Where it's like, all right, well, if you're a top seed, then you get to select your teammate or your opponent, and if you're bottom seed, you're probably gonna get selected by one of the tops. And like, there's all these weird little. It's not weird. Like, it's a very logical format, but to a casual viewer like uh, like myself, for that matter, it it can be confusing. So it's nice to have these kind of like like the actual main event is very linear and it's just like, okay, best of three, 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 grand final or yeah. whatever. I'm sure there's, I don't know the exact amount of best of threes, but oh, it's actually, very they, like direct. They don't get to choose it. I, I'm, I'm looking at Liquipedia here. It says the top seed of each group will get a random bottom seed from another group as the opponent in the main event. The second oh. seed will similar, similarly face off against a random third seed as the opponent. Well, Regardless, That's, like they I mean, kind of know the pool of teams they're going to be against. Well, I, and it, I mean, it's it is interesting because I think it's something. I, I wonder if the casual viewer, uh, you know, recognizes that they're, uh, you know, if you want to go back and look at TI, they're, you know, teams that seeded the highest actually got to choose their opponents, and uh, I, you know, I think who they choose, <laughs> you know, that that's, that you can read into that somewhat, uh, depending on who they choose. But here, at, at the very least, uh, it's interesting to know that they they're they're randomizing. Yeah, well, you know, whatever. I mean, I like format. Format's important for the teams, but honestly, as a viewer, like format doesn't unless it's something super weird. Like format is not. I don't care that much. Like yeah. it just is a matter of like, are there a ton of games or are there a small amount of games, but the games matter, and that's like an important distinction. Is because some tournaments, um, just they have too many games, and it's like, well, I can't possibly. Like, even the major, like, there weren't that many games. So far, there's been, what, like, um, 100 games or something? 200 games? Um, uh, 200 game, at least? With the open know. quals, you mean? 
Yeah, including the open qualifiers, there's been a lot of games. But I think of the main tournament, there's only been like 60 in the group stages or something like that. I don't know the exact number. Yeah, Regardless, I think they were they were just they were basically just best of twos. Uh, so two, so you'd have six games in each group. So it'd be more like f- well, 25 or 50 games. I am, I'm trying to. They were be- they were best of threes. Oh, they were. Uh, some went two zero. Yeah, they're yeah, best of three. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. They were all best of threes. But regardless, like these games, like they were, they would have two streams running at once, and it's like, well, I don't know if I'm gonna like watch two games or am I gonna watch one and have the other one? But like, it's just too many games. I, I prefer meaningful games. That's why I like these kind of main events. But everybody has their own opinions about tournament formats because like the more games are generally better. It's just less like um, let's. Oh, there was eighty-seven games uh, so far in in the in Boston uh, on LAN. So, Damn. Eh, you know, whatever. Yeah, it, that's it's fine. That's still nuts. It was forty-two hours. So, if you were to watch every single game, it would be forty-two hours of games. I don't know if that is including draft phase or not including draft phase. If you start in draft it's, phase, it, it's it's got to include co draft phase, man. Like, yeah. there's. They wouldn't sit there and do the time to cut out draft phase because that's also different each time, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I, I don't know how Dota buff gets their thing because, like, uh, that's completely this is yeah. not an entertaining conversation whatsoever. But uh, <laughs> it's been fun so far. So, Flub, did you catch any games? Oh yeah, um, there's. Uh, I haven't caught like all of them. Definitely, I I try to get in, and a lot of times, whenever I was like feeling like a stomp coming on. Um, I generally was like, eh, I'm not going to watch this game. Um, but the first day, I always do a good job and <laughs> watch as much as I possibly can. Um, so, like, one of the, the games that I saw that, like, really stood out to me was Wings versus Warriors Gaming. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw it, but it was really interesting. Um, did you two see it? No, I, it's funny because I, I was watching that group, but I was watching that group because of uh, DC. <laughs> I didn't, but those, oh, yeah. I didn't catch that. I did not catch that series at all. I caught some. I feel, I feel like I caught the third game. Honestly, like my big thing with Pro Dota is as much as I enjoy Pro Dota, I am like the way my memory works. I'm so bad at remembering like specific games because so you know, like, i think we all know there's people that are like oh you know game three of ti3 finals and it's like okay well i know it's alliance versus navi but like what happened in game three and some people will be able to tell you, like, right game three x y and z happened they pushed raxes at 42 minutes and like have all this really specific information and mm-hmm. so like when you say like wings versus warriors a oh, warrior gaming um like i know they played each other but I'm so bad with that kind of like referential, uh, like referencing specific games. <laughs> but you know, that's just yeah. me. I'm like, yeah, I'm just terrible with Pro Dota, honestly. Like, I enjoy it and I like watching it, but I watch like random games and I don't think too hard about it, and it's just fun. Like, which I don't know which of the those two series did you catch? Was uh, it was the Wings Gaming versus Warriors? No, but I mean, not... they they ended up playing twice. Um, Okay, so it was the first time. Oh, okay. Yeah, the first the first series that the, they they played against the two one the one the two one split yeah the two one okay yeah which which was like the reason why I bring it up is like I, I was incredibly disappointed in Wings like the drafting was pretty bad on on the on the on most of their games in that series uh, I felt like that they like won a lot of times because of just good gameplay, but the way that Warriors set up, like you, I could see their what they were trying to do with their draft, and they just decided to, like, like ah, we're gonna we're gonna pick some stuff that's, you know, just what we're comfortable with instead of, you know, what's what's smart here, and that's that's okay to do sometimes, but you can't like pick something that's, that's just so crazy, you know, that's just so beyond the idea of like like something that's just like so counterable um and they picked right into it uh Uh, give me an example i i i feel like i'm gonna say something wrong and someone's like gonna come back on me on twitter i I got the draft pulled up here so i can i can point to it and clarify if need be so i'm pretty sure that they picked um legion and then they picked bad after it or, or something, it was something crazy like that, where it's like, I, I, I've seen this matchup like 25 times, and, uh, not 25 th- times, but like a lot of times, and I, I know that this doesn't work as a player, 
that generally just like has general knowledge, not even like a pro player level. Um, and it's, it's like, it's shocking to me that they made, that they were making that mistake as being like TI winners. Um, so recently. Yeah. You're talking Uh, about game three of the initial series, uh, where let's see, uh, they, uh, you had warriors, uh, you had Warriors. Uh, oh no, they they actually picked the bat, and then Warriors picked the Legion against the bat. Okay. Well, there is there is there is some other like they went back and forth, and there was like one thing that like I latched on to. Um, I, I forget what it was. Like maybe when they picked up Oracle, and they already had the uh, Elder Titan to like counter that that whole concept. Um, it, it was it was something that like I I was like baffled by, and the 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 game was fun to watch because it was so close the entire time. But it was like man, if I feel like if they would have drafted just a little bit differently this entire time, that they would have had them, and it would have been an easy win, which they did. They faced them later on. And they two owed them. So yeah. I, I just I, I guess I don't respect when other teams don't respect teams enough to play at a competent level like you're not you don't have to reveal your your greatest strategy but uh, just because a game like warriors gaming isn't like maybe the the top echelon of of where all the teams are right now but you still should so, show them the same respect because they did get there and i feel like wings gaming like really dropped the ball and they have recovered since then um so i can't be too harsh on them yeah. it's just for, for me, that 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 lessens a, a team in my eyes when someone ta- doesn't take their drafting seriously and just like, oh well, we we can do whatever we want. Let's just let's just do whatever. And they kind of did that in the international too. On the first game, they did like the whole Pudge Techies thing, and like that that's that's fun and all, and that's fine. But it's it, it was like the internet the international. Um, made the international last match the finals like every game counts at that point i feel like i feel like the fun loving attitude or whatever like a lot of people love that idea love that concept of them because you know they're there to have fun or and enjoy themselves but it doesn't even seem like that they're there to have fun it seems like they're there to like kind of it's it's almost like a disrespect to the other team if you don't draft in a smart way like if you don't think that if you think cheese is going to work versus them that that well right i don't know no i i mean i i guess but at the same time like we all know wings has been doing this for forever like that's why they got famous um is i mean obviously yes they're a good team which is going to get them like notoriety but it was like you know everybody remembers the reddit thread where it's like oh wings gaming they're running like mid omni night versus ember spirit or like they run all these like bonkers things that are so out of meta and like it's very but... endearing and that's why they have a lot of fans. And like, I get you're complaining. Like, I get that. Like, that's it's, not. It's not that. It's not that I'm complaining about out of meta, though, man. Like, they they ran oh. a lot of stuff that was in meta. It was just like like everything in that draft that they had was like in, in meta. They weren't like trying to do something innovative or intelligent. They were just doing something because, okay, th- we can beat these guys. I I don't know. Like I mean, I feel like Wings is the most flub team I can think of. Like they pick bizarre things and they have all these like <laughs> weird strategies and they still work sometimes. And like I mean, sometimes it doesn't work. And when it doesn't work and you pick these weird things, like it really like looks like it's not good. And I think that's just kind of what happened. Like I don't know. I I don't like I'm not a huge Wings fan, but like I I just expect that from the team at this point. Like, that's just kind of what I think of Wings as doing is, like, I don't think they're disrespecting anybody. I think they just think about the game differently and, like, they're just there to, like, have a good time and, like, pick what they want to pick. And, like, if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. And that's just kind of, that's my thought on Wings. Yeah. I I realize, like, yeah. (laughs) I'm so scared to talk about esports on these (laughs) shows because it's so, like, like when we talk about Dota, like you can be wrong and be like, oh, you know, Maelstrom's really core on Invoker. Like that's just like wrong. Like you could do it and whatever. But like that's something you can have a discussion on. But like when we talk about esports, I'm like so nervous to talk about like exact things because like 
people are going to be like, actually, that didn't happen. Actually, you know, they didn't run Omni versus Ember Spirit. They ran Ember Spirit, and another team ran Omni. It's like, like I, uh, I don't, I don't care. But <laughs> thank you for like telling me that. Like, no, I, no, I, I can I, hear I under... the typing furiously already. <laughs> well, and I understand that too. And yeah, that happens every time we talk about uh, Proto. Somebody hits us up and says uh, that this is what they actually drafted. And and some of that's coming up from memory. I I, I am trying as we pull the games up here. Uh, or as we talk about the games, to pull them up. I mean, it's super easy to find the you know the group stage matches. Um, <clears throat> but uh, it, 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 I do think it's important to get some specifics correct, just because it's. I, I mean, I, it's important for further discussion, right? I mean, it's important for learning or maybe contemplating what we're doing on heroes whenever we build them, or um, you know, that sort of thing. I, for instance, oh, well, and I'll, I, I'll point to the perfect example. Uh, so like I said, I was watching that group, but I didn't watch any of the wings games. Uh, I was watching DC cause I'm, I'm a DC fanboy, And, uh, I saw, I, I saw the PA get picked and I saw the jug get picked in, I want to say it was game. Uh, I'm going to look this up just so I'm not completely dumb and wrong. Yeah, it was game one versus uh, LGD's uh, Forever Young. Um, so I, I I was curious to see, you know, is, is Resolution going to be on the jug and go safe? Or is we going to be on the jug and take jug mid? Because we, you know, we'd kind of seen some of that lately, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, I saw the PA pick and it was like, Jesus, you could put either of those heroes in either lane. Um and then I saw we uh, and we ended up grabbing the PA, and I, I had this you know kind of giddy moment where it's like, all right, well now I get to see if Proud's build pops up, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, I I was surprised to see the he he picked up um, a poor man shield, and I think it was two iron branches right to start. I mean he got pulled tangos as well, but. Um, from, you know, from supports, but he, you know, he started right off with that poor man shield, uh, which is something I never would do. I would, I would be, ab- I, I would, I would feel like I was an idiot doing something like that, <laughs> that early on. Um, I'm sorry, re- repeat. Well, what, what do you think was, what did you not think was normal? Uh, he picked up a poor man shield and two iron branches right before, like right as uh, at pre game start. Like that was starting items. Yeah. yeah that's. Uh, not uncommon. Okay, I, see, I, they, I, I guess like, I assume you build into the poor man shield even going mid the, that early. Okay, so um, man, now I, I'm so excited to have like expertise as a mid player nowadays, and especially because <laughs> I've like, actually been studying like other mid players and stuff. I'm not just like meandering about. I'm like, I'm putting my nose to the grindstone as they say. But on melee mids in almost all matchups, except for some melee versus melee matchups, you'd go poor man's shield every time, even if you're playing like. Um, if you're playing Alchemist, like even though he's a strength hero, like you still you just go PMS, and then um, and then you go um, either two branches or you go Fairy Fire Branch. Generally, I prefer Fairy Fire Branch, and you also do this on like it's similar to like when you start with a Null Talisman or Wraith Band or whatever on a mid. Like you start Null and then you go Branch and Fairy Fire. With Null, you have a little different wiggle room because you can go actually double Fairy Fire. Um, but when you're going PMS start, either you do the fairy fire branch thing, if it's like a regular lane and you're going to be fighting and you want to maybe have that fairy fire damage, get an advantage. But if you're in a lane where you're going to be taking a lot of harass, like let's say against an alchemist who's going to constantly have acid spray down. Well, and in this particular want... instance, it, it it made more sense to me after the fact just because he was, uh, he, he went a bit, it was a dual mid lane with uh, yeah. sniper and ogre. Um, yeah exactly you know so, so I, like yeah you're gonna be taking so, a ton yeah. of right click from sniper exactly and if you have two branches and two uh, tangos pooled tangos that's effectively four tangos right but if you had started with one branch and a fairy fire that's a lane matchup that's not going to be bursting you down they're going to be whittling you down and gradually getting you low and then eventually killing you especially playing jug like it's not like you're gonna get ass- assassinated because you're just gonna spin well and this so, was in this case yeah. it was PA that wound up going mid. Well, still, okay, yeah. still PA, like, you know, you're going to be taking incremental damage, and by the time he has assassinate, you probably have your bottle, or you have some form of health, so, you know, you'll figure it out, but that is generally, you go, you start PMS on virtually every melee mid, in most, in almost all matchups. 
Um, but yeah, then yeah. So I, I mean, there we wound up seeing the the like more mid version of of uh, you know what Proud's uh, you know pitched on the show before, uh, which was uh, he delayed the Vanguard. I, in fact, yeah. I think the Vanguard. I think the Vanguard might have even been picked up after BKB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, yeah, uh, phase, phase right into Deso, uh, right into BKB, and then followed it. They ended the game before you know that Vanguard could go anywhere. But um, yeah, the the tempo is just different. Like, yeah, it's just like mid jug. Uh, like w- when you play mid jug, you don't do the the safe lane drug build. Like, trust me, I've made that mistake before when I start when I first started <laughs> playing mid jug. Like the it's just like the timings you have as a mid are fundamentally different then the timings you're going to have as a safe lane, both in the times you need to be effective and the times that you're going to be able to farm. Because, like, you're going to have more pressure in general if you're playing mid. Like, that's why they say on mid, if you're getting, like, 40 last hits, that's, like, a good, like, start, like starting point. Whereas as a safe laner, you want to have at least 50 as a starting point. Um, and obviously those, those kind of numbers are kind of, you know, finicky. Like, they change depending on the game. But... Um, mid just generally farms less but has more XP um, like they have more XP but less gold and the safe lane has more gold but less XP than the mid um, right so but yeah I, they, I would, I would, they were all cool I games would also say real quick I would also say that like I mean he went that build because obviously like things change in game to game and I, I, I don't want to like like harp against proud or anything but his builds are great but you also have to tell what your opponent is doing. And if there was mm-hmm. a lot of magic damage that game, then, of course, uh, a BKB is much better in that scenario. Because if you could get in there and be unhindered for, like, 10 seconds in, in a really important team fight midway through the game, it's much more important to grab that BKB early than yeah. it is to grab it later on. Um, well, and it, it, made, tends, it made a ton of sense there. To with the ogre, you you know, you wanting to be able to close the distance on that sniper, and not you, you know just get stunned out and completely wrecked, mm. you know, once you got hop in, but right and slow it down and just completely crowd control to the point of not being useful. And um, yes, it's, it's helpful sometimes to have like a vanguard early to be able to like tank that idea of magic, you know, just to ha- have your other t- heroes on the team be able to move around like that. And that's why builds kind of work more in, like, the pub sense, uh, because a lot of times, even if you are going into a build, you can kind of, um, if you have other people on the team that are, like, getting the items that that you need to get to kind of help you stay alive, whether that's, like, a um, Lotus Orb or give you, like, a... um, a veil, or you know, whatever, whatever you need, you know, for the hero, uh, so that you can that you can have a situation where, okay, uh, I just don't need to worry about that, and I just go down this build, and that's and that's great to have for P, some, for someone like PA, who generally you need certain um, certain things that happen so that you have a foundation for when you team fight and you're tanky enough to do it. I just uh, I just don't want to encourage people. That this is the only way to build because that's that that's never the case. No, and I, I don't think anybody on the show. I mean, it does that even even proud, um, you know, obviously, but and even just uh, you know that last problem show that I did with him was it was interesting to even watch this game kind of in that framework, um, or with that 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 framework set up for determining what was going to be going into a build. Um, you know, I, and I, even I know, yeah, when you run PA mid, you don't favor blink strike, you, you favor, you know, you favor the mischance, uh, in, in your skill build, uh, fade, right? Isn't that, isn't that what, it, what it's called? Fade? Blur? Maybe. Blur. <laughs> blur. blur. Yeah. yeah. Favor blur. Um, but yeah, you know, so, I mean, even I understood that, but then contemplating, uh, it, it was nice, it was nice to be looking at that game and, and just even thinking about it as and partially due to me not playing dota is kind of an outsider um in a in a super analytical way which was oh yeah you know it got it i i i kept having flashbacks to that episode because it made so much sense yeah of course you're gonna go blur here because you're foregoing the vanguard you're mm-hmm. you're holding off on that vanguard 
Uh, so yeah, you you need the sustainability, so you're going to use it your built-in capability in this regard, and you can still value point your ability to close distance and deliver your damage output uh, with just a single skill point. Yeah, maybe it's not as good as it could be, but hey, it's better that your sustainability be be there in this particular instance since you're not picking up that vanguard that early. Um, and then grabbing that BKB afterwards made a ton of sense. I mean, I, you know, it, you don't you don't got to be you don't got to be the best Dota player to recognize that blink striking onto a sniper with a with a fucking ogre mage hanging around is a, a bad fucking idea. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna go great. So, uh, Ursi, you any games in particular that you caught or or, or paying attention to? Um, I mean, for me, watching the major has been less about specific games and more about the like trending heroes in the tournament. I think that's really been what I'm most interested in as far as the major goes, like seeing tons and tons of Rubik. I know this was a like top tier prediction for a lot of like the um, a lot of like casters and analysts and stats people that were posting their predictions. A lot of them were saying stuff like Rubik and Ogre Magi were going to be high on the list of priorities. So seeing Rubik there was nice. Um, I we even saw a mid Rubik from someone I don't remember. Um, and it's been fun, honestly. I've been enjoying a lot of Rubik, a lot of Luna, and uh, other other things like Sand King that we always talk about on the Thursday show and other shows. Sand King is just so good. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, it's been more about like watching how teams have been playing on average and the hero picks and less about like specific series because, I mean, I don't know. I, I know complexity. I watched a few series that I really enjoyed, like like Flav just said, the Complexity EG series. Those were the only ones that like really stood out to me, and like that I really like sat down. and I was like, I'm just gonna watch this and not do anything else. I, I don't know the uh, I'll say the uh, the second game between Wings and Forever Young, or sorry, not Wings and Forever Young, uh, DC and Forever Young was, was pretty interesting and and a damn long one. Uh, it, it, it had to have been an hour plus uh, yeah 71 minutes it, it was a long goddamn game and it, it that, that was a pretty interesting one, one to watch i will say uh, i i should have caught eg in complexity i i always try to like catch an eg game uh just to represent north america you know that's always my go-to shtick right if we're if i'm gonna be if i if, I, if i'm gonna be patriotic about anything i might as well just be esports right oh yeah <laughs> It's just like, you know, if you're a football fan, generally you're going to pick the team from your state, right? Yeah. Unless your state really sucks or has, like, a, a team that you personally disagree with. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, if it's esports, I'm going to... Generally, I'm going to stick with the NA team, let's be honest. So, uh, on your point about heroes that have been picked, uh, 28 heroes did not make the cut. 28 heroes so far have not been played. Yep, so far, of course. Yeah. Yeah, it, and yeah, and a number have only been played once. Yeah, uh, um, and yeah, yeah, uh, like Night Stalker, Tide Hunter, Enchantress, Bloodseeker, Doom, Vengeful, Enigma, Visage, Kunkka, Nature's Prophet, and Centaur War Runner all saw a single game of play. Yeah, rest in peace, Kunkka support that got nerfed into oblivion, and Visage, uh, Visage was one of the ones that was unpicked at at TI, um, but it was picked obviously only once, and it had a zero, and it lost the game. But um, it was picked once this tournament. So, yeah. And of the unplayed heroes, like under <laughs> under Lord and Arc Warden are listed here. Big surprise, they're not being picked. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I think there's a, a good number of these that we can see, like in an actual game. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll see. Uh, yeah, I, I, certain I, I, heroes I, I, like I've... are just not going to be. I'm sorry, certain heroes are just not going to be picked, like, realistically, and then other heroes, like, just weren't picked, but could easily be picked, if that makes sense. Yeah, who who would be on the top of that list for you that you think it will see an appearance yet? Uh, Ember Spirit's not been picked yet. I think he's pickable. Uh, Death Prophet, similarly. No Zeus yet. Zeus, I don't, I don't know. We could, we could go without seeing Zeus. Spectre, we could easily see. Um, Bane, we could easily see. Huskar, maybe, in some kind of specific draft. Lich, we could see, because Faceless has been decently popular. Um, but, like, heroes like PL and Lena are just, like, not going to get played. And, like, Troll Warlord. Like, in what universe do you pick Troll Warlord instead of, like, any other right-click and carry? Yeah. Do you um, still think Tiny Skyrath, we haven't seen yet. Out of the mix? You know, no, I, I, I think... I keep hearing Proud say that Tiny is just worthless. Oh, I mean, I, 
Uh, he's not worthless. He's just bad. Um, and like, but he can work. And I think I think he has potential. I think he could be running with some specific strategy, like a tiny IO. But even tiny IO, like generally, like IO just gets picked regardless of the tiny or the CK combo because IO is just a really good hero. And then we have a lot of really good IO players nowadays in the pro scene. But I feel like Tiny could get picked. I don't think he's like so bad that he wouldn't get played. Um, yeah. And he just kind of takes a different role now compared to what he used to. Like I know when I have seen him in in pro games and in like high tier games recently, has been this kind of like blink shadow blade build where you're just trying to like really wreak a lot of havoc. You're not trying to scale into like this like Echo Saber Ags build. Like yeah, you buy those items later. But it's much more about this like hyper aggressive like I'm just gonna like walk around the map and things are just gonna die in fear in my wake. And <laughs> it's just a different way of playing him. And also like I've seen more like duo off lanes with tiny. I, I don't know. I, I feel like the hero is pickable. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see him this tournament, considering like there's not a like billion games being played, but I feel like he's pickable, just weak. Um compared to some other heroes that are like actually unpickable, like PL and like Wraith King. Yep. And Lena, yeah. rest in peace. <laughs> uh, so we we ended up talking about the Boston Major a lot longer than it, maybe I thought we thought we would. Uh, but uh, so Flub, uh, so maybe we'll get to patch notes on a, on a future show uh, when they actually come out. Um, well, I mean, we're definitely doing that. Yeah, <laughs> but well. we we can make some quick predictions. Also, we should say what is our favorite for the major. Yeah, that's I what imagine I was gonna like say. we're gonna have NA Pride. Yeah, I well, I, I'm gonna root for DC all the way through for sure. I, yeah. I, you know, I they're they're playing uh, team faceless in, in at the for, you know the start. Uh, then it goes on to Ehome and NP. I I I find it hard to believe that NP overcomes Ehome there. I think it'll be cool to see DC and Ehome playing. Uh, and then you know from there we'll we'll see. I mean they they're in a relatively tough bracket. Like I know newbie seated relatively low, but. I I mean I guess I, I I guess I haven't seen enough newbie lately to feel or to feel confident that they're still a super strong team, but it's hard to imagine that they're not. Um, and and I you know LGD Forever Young I can't imagine going on, so it's probably LGD Gaming that they're legitimately looking at facing if they make it much further. I you know I I I don't know how well LGD has been performing. I you know yeah outside of the the group stage. So but I I like DC's chances. I I I would love to see them go deep. I would love to see them be the team that performs in these major Valve events. Yeah, uh, I'm also rooting for DC. I like VP has been very fun to watch too. So uh, I'd be down for VP. They're like my secondary basically. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely DC. Also, I like OG now that S4 is off laning. I think that's a really interesting uh, dynamic as yep. a team flub who are you rooting for well ursi just stole mine oh, uh, i was gonna <laughs> i was gonna say like uh i really like uh dc once i mean you gotta show you the na pride uh if you don't then that's i mean what are you doing and uh, vp I, I just i like how i've always liked uh like their style but like it wasn't successful until like as of late. I, I like what they've done to the team as of late, and uh, I'm I'm really hoping that they do well this tournament. I kind of I'm almost they're almost even for me really um, on level of who I want to win there. Uh, I would also really like Faceless to win, but I don't like I don't see that happening. I don't know. They just haven't been looking that strong. Um, in, in the group stages, I'm rooting against and... Faceless right off the start, so no go flip. Oh, really? No go. Yeah, I mean they're playing DC game one or series one. Oh, uh-huh. yeah. So sorry. Oh, right, sorry. right. Okay. Gotta, All if, right. I, if I got to choose, I, I'm going DC. I'm sorry, Flub. Well, that's I, I that's understandable, man. Because I mean, you you, you got to you got to show that NA pride. So that's what I was just talking about. So I I respect that. And my, I mean, truthfully, my team that I wanted to uh, to see anyway got knocked out because of their visas uh were 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 denied so whatever i, I don't like i uh, this tournament kind of is like bittersweet for me like i'm so excited watching dota but like i was actually kind of getting super excited about execration and then that happened and i was like yeah all right well that leaves a bad taste yeah that that blows i i i don't know how we fix that i don't or if we even can you know i I don't think we can. Yeah. Um, well, I mean the despite our the royal lofty we. positions in the UN. 
Yes. Um, Ambassador <laughs> Sinity will be on it. We'll be bringing yeah, it up I'll at the know. next UN Security Council meeting. <laughs> yep. I mean, it is what it is, right? That's just like the nature of having an international uh, sport or like international anything. Like the visas are not as easy as we would like them to be. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so folks, tune in, and uh, hell, Ursi's going to be there, so you get to root live. Uh, are you going to be there? How quickly are you getting there tomorrow? Uh, I'm getting there at like 1 p.m. on Wednesday, and I will be there uh, until, you know, I'll be there for the entire event. I'm leaving Sunday morning, uh, and obviously the event ends Saturday night, so I will, I will be there in general. Uh, I don't know where I'll be or if I'm going to be in the event constantly but i will be in the in the boston area unless some unless like my train crashes or something like i will be in boston so i will see y'all there i know i don't know i might end up going to the deso ladies meetups because i'm room oh, cool. i'm i'm gonna be hanging out with some of them so uh i may be there and i'll be at obviously when when dot p does their thing i'll be there so i'll be i'll be around yeah. also it's a small event right so like it's easier to find people compared to ti where it's just like all right there's a billion people around like yeah. and seattle's a big place like well give the deso ladies our best tell them we're we're looking for we're gonna, we've been talking to ashney forever but she we we had a scheduling issue and then she got came down with a cold we were gonna have her come on uh the monday show actually to talk about what the deso ladies have been up to and uh yeah they're great yeah Big it fan. feels more pertinent now than maybe ever before to have uh group, well, groups yeah. like that so well also like more most importantly nobody in dot p talks about k-pop with me but a bunch of the desolators <laughs> are into k-pop so that's that's how i make my inroads into their association that's right Ursi bridging the gap K-pop. between the genders with k-pop oh, man k-pop I, I, is I liked... the great unifier that's that's what it's called frequently <laughs> oh okay i like i liked all the deso ladies and until you have to bring in that the, yeah. the k-pop well, i can't get down with k-pop man it's all right like, you know I, I listen i listen because you're my friend but oh god it is it is painful you you got to realize how painful it is for me you yeah, talk about well, me being 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 nice and like polite like k-pop talk is like Oh God, it sucks, man. Well, that's Cyphus, uh... you you actually like don't even know how bad it is because Flub Skrunk too, but Skrunk less so. Flub is just too nice and like he's just like listens or like he probably just mutes me and like comes back five la- five minutes later. But like on Sundays, the Saturday night to Sunday morning is when We Got Married gets subtitled, and I I love that show. Oh, so God. Sunday, I watch it before team practice, and my success or our team success is generally predicated on how good the episode is because that like that changes my entire mood for a Sunday, and I end up talking to Flub about it and like just spitting all this what I'm sure sounds like nonsense and like talk about the new couples or talk about like oh you know X Y and Z happened and oh my God yeah anybody else would just be like. Sam, shut up. I don't care. But Flub <laughs> is just like silent. And then he's like, okay, man, I'm not into this, but I'm glad you are. And then like we just su- sit silently and then practice starts. When are, when are you Flub just going to get there first? <laughs> when are you just going to go full bore and just move to South Korea and leave this all behind? Um, no, probably never. Uh, although, yeah, <laughs> um, there was actually like post election, I had like a brief stint where I was like, I'm fairly certain I could get a job teaching English uh, in a foreign country with like my qualifications as like an education major and all that. Um, and then I was like, I'm not going to do that because uh, <laughs> that's because my dad's also a teacher. And there was one point where he was just offered a job in Japan and obviously Japan, very different country, but similarly, like if, if you are a professional teacher or like you have a degree, like it's not rocket science to get a job in one of those countries teaching English. But obviously, I'm not doing that. But there was like a brief, like an hour of research where I did where I was like, man, <laughs> I don't like when public education gets gutted. I'm not working in a private school. I'm not yeah. working in some hellish charter school. And uh, maybe I'll just like, and like public schools are all going to get gutted. But I live in New York, so it's fine because, like, you know, we support public education. Because you're, you're a liberal paradise up there. You, you, you scum. Well, New, yeah, New York has the highest paid teachers of any state. Uh, so, and I, I'm well, my school is well connected and I'm a star student. So I'm pretty confident in my ability to get a job. But if that's not the case, then maybe, yeah, I'd have to go crazy and move to an, a different country. And, uh, but then, you know what they say about like expats, right? Is they become more American by leaving because they like 
get pigeonholed as like the American guy or like they have to defend America in conversations and stuff. I, I was I read a really interesting that, that, sociological piece about that. I, I yeah, you should send that to me. I I I'd yeah. love that. I I you know I I I've been toying with it. I've been looking around. I got I've got yeah. a, I got a good resume. Uh, so I I contemplated it. I, I don't know that yeah. Roland can, can leave anytime soon. Uh, you know I, I yeah, tried with to all convince, those outstanding warrants. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I, tried uh, to, but yeah. <laughs> I tried to convince him to look at Canada, but I, I don't think the missus is going to have any of it. Yeah. Other than, yeah. I mean, if she's not going to have any of it, he's not going to have any of it from the sounds of it. So, well, we know who mean, wears the pants around there. He talks a big game around the studio, but I know. Yeah. Um, I, I see. <laughs> yeah, thank God she does, because Rowan wearing pants is a terrifying idea. Uh, but, yeah, it's... Uh, I'm not going to be moving anytime soon. I'll, I'll say that much, but... Anyway, this is a weird tangent. Yeah, you know? what it, what it, um, well, you know, yeah. this is how we decided to end this show. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, so instead of doing our one minute on, you know, any previous thing we discussed today, I'm going to give you each one minute. Uh, tell me what your tell me your one major patch prediction you feel so confident you're going to get you're going to be right about, and tell me the one thing you would really love to see coming out of a new patch. Flub, I'm going to start with you. Um, damn. One thing I would really love to see is actually Visage getting getting buffed, um, just because I respect people who play Visage, and it's fun to actually see him in a match. And it's a good way to lessen a pudge. Um, if you play versus a really good Visage player, they use their birds like, as hooking bait, and man, that does nothing to the bird, and then you get stunned and sit into an awkward position. So um, it'd be kind of a good way to counteract that. Uh, something that like I feel like will happen. Uh, that's a hard that's a hard guess, but I feel like the the damage probably on Drow will be will be nerfed. I don't think they'll nerf her gust or her like slow on her arrows because if you nerf any of that, she's just not going to be workable. Um, so I I, th- I think that like her general ultimate may be nerfed for like the amount of agility that it gives. Okay. Um, yeah, I like my it. my predictions are. Say I'm copying. I'm just like my prediction is that Monkey King is going to get released. That's cheating though, so I won't say that. Um, <laughs> if I had to bet on something, I'd say we're going to see like large scale changes. Like we all we have all heard like the rumors and stuff on Ardo Two, etc. But I think we're going to see large large changes to like the overall game. Like maybe the map. Or maybe they'll add like new creeps. I know somebody was talking about the potential. They were they're just I assume they were randomly pitching this, but they were saying that like maybe there's gonna be new creep spawns, like um like you know, every every three and a half minutes you have a catapult. Well maybe like every two minutes you're gonna have like a spearman, or every, you know, minute you're gonna have a XY or like, you know, whatever. So I think there's gonna be some kind of like what about chain? I'm gonna pitch this to you. What about a dire specific creep and a radiant specific creep that have I don't know different abilities. I don't no, I don't think Wait, creeps with what? abilities. Different are fair. abilities, no. Yeah, no, there no no like ability creeps. I think they're just gonna have like something that's like oh they do more damage to heroes but less damage to creeps or more damage to buildings just like siege creeps do. Where they're specialized, they don't do weird things. They just do one thing, and it's like well known. So I, I, I think overall, though, I think we're gonna see some form of change to the dire and the radiant uh, as like NPCs, uh, like whether they do something extra or they change in some other degree. Um, I think like what I really want is, I mean, obviously, I really want just a ton of stuff to happen because I really want to just like have the game be shaken up in a huge way. But I would really like, and this is well known, I've probably said this a dozen times, but uh, I, w- I would love to have Lena be buffed and um, Pudge be nerfed and OD be nerfed because I started playing OD the other day and uh, he's a pretty good hero, even though I suck at him. Like, I just dislike that hero fundamentally. So I'd, I'd like mostly just Lena buffs, though, because not only do I love her, but, like, she actually really needs it. Also... An additional prediction is just that at least one hero is going to be reworked, like maybe not entirely, but fundamentally reworked, um, like at least a couple of their abilities. I, I think that's almost guaranteed. Is that they're going to be some form of like significant rework to a hero? I... Fingers crossed. Wraith King or PA on that idea, by the way. 
Okay, yeah. I, I was with you on the bristleback, like I said last week. I, I, I'm, I'd love that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I like Visage here reworked, honestly. Um, no. I had a really good cool. conversation with somebody in Discord that we were just, I think it was Chaos, that we were just theory crafting a Visage rework, and it was like really compelling. And I'm into it. It might have been Dunzo Daggins. Now I can't remember. Um, but I think Visage, I think there are certain heroes that are weak because of the larger scale changes to the game and more and in like individual item introductions that necessitate a rework like visage birds they are weak not just because they are weak and they have a long a low a long cooldown but they're weak because of the introduction of items like echo saber and items like dragon lance and hurricane pike so i feel like that's when you want to rework for a hero not just like a buff yeah yeah. Birds are cool though, man. I mean, they're cool, but they <laughs> suck, right? Like, they're, it's like a terrible ability right now. Like, it has a, whatever it is, like 120 second cooldown. You get 100 or 150 gold for killing them. You have to have agonims for to have three of them. They die in like whatever amount of hits. They um I, I, they I deal damage like... for a limited period of time. The stun is super telegraphed, and everybody builds four staff now. So like, you're obviously gonna dodge it. Like there are just yeah. so many problems with the birds now that like they need to be fundamentally changed to be useful. I just I like the idea of summonable units with spells because like no other summonable units have like spells. They're just like okay, these guys take less magic damage. These guys can replicate well, yeah. whenever they attack or brewmaster know. ult. Or that's, that, that's bear. not that's not creeps. You, well, you like yeah, but they're summonable creeps. units. Like, they're units oh, that... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Brewmaster summons. That's why they're called Brewlings. Uh, they... All right. All right. I'm killing it because... Uh, oh, what I want... No, yeah. no. We got to hear yours. We got to hear <laughs> yeah. yours. Oh, hear yeah, yours. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I... What is your favorite summonable unit? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite summonable unit. Uh... <laughs> No, no. There's there's that. a dick do, joke do in there asked. somewhere. Um, no, I, I, I what I want what I want to see. Uh, I, I or I guess kind of what I'm craving. Maybe a new item. I, I I'd like to. I actually would like to see some items. Um, yeah. You know, nothing major, but just something to to add a little flavor. Something for me to go into the next few pubs and uh, think about building uh, and okay. Wait, watch a bunch quick, of idiots though, build that shouldn't. What's like? What style are you talking? Like, like a like a late game item or an early game item? I I'll take anything. I, I anything on the table for me. I I I'd love to see, I'd love to see something to spice up uh, supports yet again, and, uh, and and so maybe preferably that becomes the early game item, and uh, I wouldn't mind to see some. I wouldn't mind seeing some new you know late game carry item. I, I especially if we're getting a new carry, maybe we get a new item. You know. Uh, yeah, I mean, the issue with that is, like, it's interesting to us as people with thousands of games of Dota 2, but I'm so apprehensive whenever I hear people that are like, oh, I want new items, because it's like, well, if we add new items, and unless they create an entire new tutorial system, which, honestly, maybe that's the change I most want, is, like, a way for Dota to be easier, e more accessible to new players. I don't think it because, ever like. <laughs> I, well, yeah, I mean, you know, as I, it is now, it, it like, can't. I, it, it just, yeah, it legitimately can't. I mean, if you want, but you can to, make it. Yeah, I can make it more accessible. Like, there's a big it, difference between being accessible and just being more accessible compared to how it is now. Well, I mean, that's matchmaking, that right? I mean, the the best way to make Dota accessible is is through matchmaking. It, it, unfortunately, playing with people uh, that are at a Not similar skill level. I I disagree. I I think if you you could make Dota a much more accessible game if you had better bots that acted more like people. If you had more than whatever it is, 30 heroes played by bots. If you had uh, better restrictions on smurfing, better restrictions on uh, account buying, stuff like that. Um, I think you could easily... I think with minimal input, they could make the game more accessible. And yes, of course, it would still be an incredibly difficult game that's hard to get into, but still more accessible than it is now like yeah the fact that the tutorials are so minimal and like they acknowledge that this game is incredibly hard to get into and like yeah there's a huge player base but like this game that you can always improve and like i feel like there are some easy steps they could take to make the game more accessible and have more people playing it and more people enjoying it um at the same time so to get back to my initial point like if they add items like that's exciting for us and i think it's interesting but 
I like cringe at the thought of new heroes and new items because of those new players or like casual players that are just like either going to ignore it because they just like can't be bothered or it's just an additional thing to learn on an already incredibly large burden of knowledge to get into this game I, to I even guess... play it like even play at a low level, you need so much information. Yeah, oh, a hundred percent. I I I completely agree with you there. I guess I'm I'm I, I, and I, that's it's purely selfish wanting that type of thing. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, I I agree. It, it's wanting a shakeup. It it's wanting uh you know what I mean. It's it's craving, it's craving the chaos of change. Uh, I more than anything probably. Uh, and 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 that's likely a bad thing for the overall health of the game. I I I'll I'll completely agree with you there. Um, that being said, I mean, patches generally, are, you know, <laughs> patches themselves I, I, I are kind of an impediment just by their very nature to getting intimately involved with the game or it kind of killing its, its accessibility, uh, simply because, you know, those casual players that you're talking about that may never learn those things about those items, um, they're out there and they're not paying attention to patch notes. I mean, it's why you see, it's why you still see Lena getting picked a shitload. It's why you still see, um, you know, people never buying raindrops at, at particular skill levels. Um, it, it's, 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 I, I guess my point being more that we're already seeing the effects of that. And I don't know, I don't know that there's any level of a tutorial system that you can put in place to to make the game accessible. You can make the game accessible from a viewing perspective, um, you know, and or try to make it more appealing. And I guess in that regard, when you're watching it go down, but I I'm not convinced. I, I'm I'm not convinced that the that Dota will ever be will ever be the kind of game that you can pick up and in a, a a day or two of play say oh i get it enough to fully appreciate everything that's going on i i actually feel like that they've made strides every patch that they come out with like every major patch they really improve the bots in general like i i generally don't play it uh, i know ursi you don't generally play versus I, bots I um, love playing versus bots, but the bots are broken and terrible. They've been getting worse every patch. So. I'll tell you what's fun is to try to play fuck, okay. or fucking Ursa in a bot game, and every time you go to grab a Roche, have four idiots walk over to help you. They yeah, they were improving them, Flub. You're right. They There was like a bunch of patches in a row where like they would add new heroes and add new bot mechanics, but the last few have not been that. And like they don't know how th- certain things work. They just, like, sometimes they'll just feed, like... They just don't like they're just fundamentally like messed up, uh, right as they are now. Like, I used to play bot matches every day just to warm up and just like to get my like fingers in emotions and all that, but they're like they're really not good now and like not even playable, like they're actually broken. Yeah, it's I, like if you had a room but they just ran into a wall over and over, like that, that's how the bots are in some games. That'd be cool, like they don't even go for double rune, <laughs> like, yeah, it's just it's silly. You're yeah, getting but... Cyphex excited to play versus some bots now. <laughs> All right, so here's what I'm going to say, though, before I close the show out. There's one thing I would love to see, and I think if we see it, that it's proof that Valve listens to this show and loves us. And I want to see <laughs> I, I, I want to see the Necro Ags rework that we discussed. I wanna, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah want to I, I wanna, I see you pay death's toll to come back and pay it directly to Necro. I mean, yeah. dude, any change to Necro, like, I'm happy with, because that... Freaking that agonims is so unfun. Like the idea that a mechanic of the game is just to make the other person play less is is like so fundamentally unfun. Like its only directive is to make the game less fun for another person. Like that's not just like Doom. Like what a n- unimaginative gar like garbage fun <laughs> like garbage ability to have in the game. Yeah. Like it's it's actually just re- like my hands are on my head right now out of frustration that that exists in such a beautiful game. Like Dota is so complicated <laughs> and has so many things and all these intense interactions and like. Then there's stuff like Doom and Necrophos Alt that are just so like linear and nonsense. It's just like, oh, like what does uh like what does Necro Alt do? Oh, it makes you dead for a long time and you can't buy back, like effectively ruining entire portions of the game and like large strategic elements compared to like an ability like 
I don't know, uh, EMP from X from uh, from Invoker. It's like okay, it reduces enemy mana. It does damage relative to the amount of mana it reduces. It increases Invoker's mana relative to the amount that's stolen. It you know does all these other things. Like that's only one of his abilities, and like he's a complicated hero with other abilities that are simple but like it's just so silly to have an ability that's like yeah what do you do oh you take damage and you play the game less oh fun okay cool dota 2 <laughs> so if you're listening out there valve the specifics are you, you no more of this bullshit where we can't buy back we get the option to buy back with the ags but we have to pay the toll to come back and that extra gold that's added on goes to Necro. We'll let you decide how how it should be balanced, what those amounts should be, all that. We leave up to you and your infinite wisdom. But that's our that's our proposition here at dot P. At least it's mine. Here, here. Or or like even like an idea of like it takes off of his timer too. Like that'd be kind of cool too. Like you could like if you pay, you you take off like X amount of time from his death timer, so it like. I mean, I know that kind of works like a uh, like a bloodstone then, but giving taking away like extra time of yours, like giving someone a quicker death respawn, so that they don't have to use their buyback, that's pretty cool too. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, All that's right. a really good idea. Actually, I'll, I'll take what Flub's if like suggestion as well. Yeah. What if like Necrophos Ags, and then you can close the show. Out, sorry. Um, <laughs> what if Necrophos Ags, if you it, it had like a, a mechanic that was like charge based, where it's like, all right, if you get three kills with reaper scythe in one life then you respawn instantly um like at the same spot or something like i feel like that'd be a cool way to like i don't know the canon because like dota lore is like nonsense but um the it'd be interesting if it was like oh like he's taken the souls of three people therefore when he dies like his soul just immediately comes back or something He's basically I, I I can't remember what the term is for the you know you have necromancers for death magic right you have uh, he's a necrolite yeah but he he's uh he's about plague and disease so it's I we we were thinking initially that he was uh, supposed to like represent that that uh, passage into the you know the underworld sort of a thing when we initially kind of came up with that idea uh, but hey it's never too late to rework his fucking lore either. You know, I mean, nobody knows it, right? Yeah. So they could just change it, and like people like <laughs> like Sir Action Slacks would notice, and nobody else would care. Yeah, like they, he has like Egyptian uh, style, uh, what's it called? Like cosmetics, like yeah. In addition to like Plague Doctor cosmetics, like yeah. you, you can do whatever you want with him, is what we're saying, Valve. So uh, yeah, just not what it is now. <laughs> yeah, listen to us and uh, know that we're right, and we speak for the people. <laughs> All right, on that note, <laughs> we're looking forward to the Boston Major. Uh, if you're going to be there, hit up Ursi, hit up Proud, send them a tweet. They'll be around. They'll find you. They're they're very likable guys. I, I kind of like both of them. Uh, That's fair. You know? They're, you, yeah, they're all right. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of like both of us, too. <laughs> Flub likes them a little bit less and less every week. Um, <laughs> That's fair. That's also fair and completely understandable. <laughs> you can find us on defenseofthepatients.com. Uh, tweet, us at, uh, tweet at us at dot p underscore show. Uh, I'm going to give out our individual Twitters just so people can hit you guys up. I'm at Doppy underscore Cyphus, but fuck me. He's at Flub Dota with two Bs, but fuck him. I loved you, Flub. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> if you're going to tweet at them while they're there, it's at Ursinity and at Proud Dota. I, of course, you can also find us on iTunes. Just search Defense of the Patients, leave a review, tell a friend. That's how we grow. That's how we get more visibility on iTunes. Uh, we're also on Stitcher. We're also on Google Play, all your favorite podcast apps, however you find us. Uh, and email us at defensethepatients at gmail.com. I hear we got a show going on on Tuesdays with Flub where uh, you guys get to ask questions and Flub tries to get us to answer them. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't, but we always try. <laughs> uh, so send those questions to defensethepatients at gmail.com. We're working through them, and if you send a question, we're not just going to ignore it. If you haven't heard it yet, if you've sent one in that we haven't gotten to, Flub's getting to them. you gotta, you got to realize who he's working with. you got Proud, you got Roland, they, they digress, and my God, do they digress. Uh, so he he tries to get as many of those things in as he can, but you know it doesn't always work, right, Flub? <laughs> you are correct, sir. You yeah, correct. this Flub had a... He had quite the burden on this week's Tuesday show because it, it was myself, Proud, and Flub, and it was a, I thought it was a really good show, but being that we are teammates and close friends and all disagree heavily about everything in Dota 2... It was an episode. Uh, it was a fun <laughs> one. I actually listened to it myself over again at work today because I was like, oh, what a what a show. 
Yeah, it's a great one. Go back, check them out, and check any of them out. If you're uh, if, if you're looking to send a question, uh, do it to, defend, do, to send it to defense of the patients at gmail dot com so that Flip can start cataloging those and get a hold of them. And uh, yeah, like I said, we'll burn through them as we get them. Uh, follow us on Twitch, Twitch TV forward slash dot ptv. That's d o t p t v. And our YouTube channel is YouTube dot com forward slash dot ptv one. Uh, you can find all sorts of content there on the YouTube. You can see uh, the replay analyses that have been rolling out from the Patreon, Patreon dot com forward slash Defense of the Patients to uh, order one of those and help support the show. Uh, and if we're on dot ptv, you can watch Ham. You can watch uh, the aforementioned Ursi Proud and Flub stream their uh, Hakuna Marana practices. And occasionally you can see Roland be a negligent father, streaming as well. Uh, all of these things available. And the patch notes review. And, uh, oh, yeah, patch and notes. Patch notes. Uh, and we're going to, I haven't even run this by Roland, but maybe we'll have you and Proud like, come on the Monday show and talk about everything that was going on at the at the Boston Major while it's still fresh on everybody's mind or something. Sure, uh, that's a good idea, because we're not going to want to talk about it after that, because the patch is going to hit, and nobody's going to care about the major once the patch is hit, I'll <laughs> tell right. you that much. So we'll uh, we'll try to do that, and of course, uh, stay tuned for those patch notes, uh, you know, uh, schedule, or uh, air times, we will, we'll coordinate it, we'll send out a tweet, uh, so follow us there, and we'll try to announce it in advance on the show if we can. Uh, Ursi and Proud, I suspect you're going to be semi-tired, because you're going to be doing a little bit, well, you may be less so than Proud, but doing some traveling over that weekend, so... Well, he's going to be at our friend Skrunk's house for like that entire week. And oh, okay. Awesome. Skrunk is actually going to be on our patch notes review because he's an offlaner. Also, he's smart, but he's an offlaner, and we need that perspective. Uh, and uh, but yeah, Proud's living with Skrunk for like a week um, uh, as his vacation. So Skrunk will also be doing the patch notes review. And he's he's a delightful young boy uh, in the sense that he's not young. He's older than us, <laughs> but uh, he's a he's a he's a good person to have on patch notes. Um, awesome. So we're excited, but we will Wait, definitely be doing I- that. I just realized something. So wait, our patch note review will be going basically on the Tuesday show then, because we won't have my show. Uh, Is probably that... Ooh, that might be that might be the case. We will figure it out and okay. <laughs> and let everybody. It will know. be posted asap, yeah. right? Because people want, and especially because it's gonna be super long. Uh, like like the patch notes review, I would not be surprised if it's like five hours plus, because yeah. from what we hear, it's gonna be a big patch. So people are gonna want to listen to it over the course of multiple days. I imagine, or they're just going to want to binge it all day at work on Tuesday. That's probably what I'm going to do with some of the ones I listen to. So we're going to have it up ASAP. Yeah. And whether that replaces the Tuesday show or the Wednesday show or the Thursday show, whatever. We can we can rearrange okay. shows too, well, depending on all that. Well, if it does cancel uh, Tuesday show, then we'll have Toffees next week. So the the, the the next week after that. So stay stu- stay tuned and send messages for me uh, at at dot b uh, at dot b. At gmail.com. At defense of the patients at gmail.com. I don't have the the stuff in front of me, my bad. All right. Sorry, uh, that's cool. It'll be fun to have toffees on. If you guys have toffee specific questions, maybe send those in. Let us know in advance. Ask him about Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Okay, I think that's it. I I think I got everything right. Is there anything else important? uh, You said iTunes reviews. You said the Patreon. Yeah. Yeah, Sure, why not? Uh, Doppybills.tumblr.com. Proud has builds there. You can request builds from him. I keep saying I'm going to put builds there, but I keep not doing that. And I'm sorry, but it'll happen eventually. Yeah, it'll be there. It will, will, you know, time. In due time. It's an elusive. I'm building suspense. (laughs) It's an elusive beast. All well, right. Also, like, I don't want to make them now because we're gonna have the patch like coming out. That, yeah. Oh, that's the excuse I'm using now. There you oh, go, man. That's yeah. So good. Screw builds until there's a new patch worth building with. All right. So until next time, folks. I'm Cyphus for Flub and Ursi and the reworked Necro Ags per Valves uh, listening to this show, saying good luck and guys.